Hi, I'm David and welcome to Leisurebit. And today we're going to have a look at how we're getting on with camper control and specifically look at uh, what I'm calling the undervan module, which connects things to the fresh waste to dump valves and that kind of thing. So let's take a look. Right then, let's get started. So I just want to start by saying it took me three iterations to get to this version that I'm going to demonstrate to you as working. There's the first one. It was just a little bit too tight and compact and I had a fault with it. And when I was testing it, I inadvertently connected a 12 volt line to a five volt input, which it didn't like a lot. As all electricals run on smoke, it let the smoke out and then it no longer works. So let's get rid of that one. And then, worked on the second version of it. Uh, and again, it was just getting a little bit too tight for a prototype. Once I've actually cracked the um, design and checked it out, I can shrink it down to fit in a box about this size that just fits underneath the van. And as I said, this is the, the kind of under van control module that I've been working on firstly. And then that connects up to the uh, display that you'd have seen in the original video. And that's kind of next step on the list. but. As I've said previously, I wanted to make sure each of the solutions added some value on its own without necessarily needing the whole system. So this module is about controlling uh, fresh and waste dump valves. And uh, that's an upgrade in my case that I want to do to the uh, Eldis CV van um, because that just has manual taps on. And two things I was trying to achieve there was number one, increase the water flow but secondly, automated at the same time. And there's a couple of ways I've uh, made it work. So the first one is um, you can open and shut the valves with the buttons, like so. There's the fresh, there's the waste. And you should be able to hear the, the valve work there as it, as it opens and closes. We do a little bit of a close up of that one uh, just in the corner of the screen, just to show, because you obviously can't see the valves because of the outlet taps here. Um, so that's its simplest function. And let's just switch them back open again. And how I've set it up is when the light's off, it's closed. When the light's flashing on the switch, it's opening or closing. And when it's open, um, the light stays on on the switch. It doesn't use a, a lot of power even to have the uh, lights on. It's not driving them at full power. It's just more of a subtle thing so that you know whether you've got your valves up, open or closed and you can easily see to um, press the button uh, when you need to do it. Why put buttons on? Um, very simply, there's sometimes you actually are stood round at the tap and you want to open or close it. So it was just for a convenience point there. If you wanted to, you could add additional buttons in uh, parallel to that. And you could arrange where you put the uh, button. I've just put them up at the top and this is just a hangover uh, a, a door storage basket that I've used to demonstrate it. Obviously when I've got the van we'll fit them uh, onto the van and uh, work out the best positioning for it. Um, it works with a control module that you can see here. And I've also got a little wiring module that I made up again just to, while I'm prototyping, just to deal with the um, all of the wires and things just to make it a bit easier to connect up um, so it's less fiddly. So that's the, um, the brains of the outfit if that makes sense in there. I also added a, a remote control feature. I've got a little uh, remote control here. It's got four buttons on this one, A, B, C and D. And uh, if I press uh, B, it'll close the fresh valve. And if I press D, it'll close the waste valve. And guess what? If I press A, it'll open the fresh valve. And if I press C, it'll open the waste valve. So this gives you, um, it's something you can bob in your pocket, um, just quite handy. Got a little uh, key ring or clip on uh, attachment there. So you can just pop that in your pocket. And then if you sat in the driver's seat or whatever, you can just press the button on there. Um, it's one thing I found when I hired a, a motorhome that had the electric valves to dump your waste and water, you had to actually go to the control panel which was on the passenger side of the vehicle and select the option to open the valves to dump the water when you were over the waste dump which was at the 
driver's side of the vehicle. So it was just a little bit um, fiddly there to, to, uh, to do that one because you're always at kind of the opposite side to what you needed to be. Um, the remote control there, uh, obviously optional, um, not necessarily to have, but it just adds the ability to be wherever you want, uh, you know, in or out of the van to actually trigger off that uh, fresh or waste dump. Probably slightly change the configuration of the remote in time so that uh, maybe use A for open and close of fresh and B for open and close of waste. Maybe use C and D for something else such as put some lights on but we'll, we'll evolve that and configure that up as we move forward with camp control. But that gives you a little bit of a view there of how it works. Um, the power consumption's uh, really light. This is what I like about these valves because once they've transitioned to either open or close state, um, there's negligible power consumption, if any. And, and the whole thing in standby is using about 30 milliamps, but in the next iteration of it, I think I can get that down to probably about under 10 milliamps, I would expect, because within the... Um, prototype you can see there um, it's driving a couple of LEDs that uh, once the covers on the back like so you then can't see them so that's um, as I say the control module or the brains of it um, coming out of it, it runs with some um, RJ45 connected kind of cable um, or Ethernet cable I should say um, which is shielded uh, as it's used to supply the power for anything that's low power so it says running a separate power cable and that connects back to the main module uh, which is used as a master to control things we'll, we'll come on to that one in a future episode if you don't if you just wanted it to use it as a remote control there you could just just pull out a couple of uh, uh, positive and negative to connect to the battery and uh, away you go there and uh, that's it so as i say you can get the power consumption down and with the um, ethernet cable it also acts as a communication between this module and the main control module so that it can send commands and things to it on the bottom of the module again it's something you wouldn't put on if you're using it as standalone there is a temperature and humidity sensor um, and the reason that's on there is because this is going under the van we can use that for reading outdoor temperature and humidity um, and I've also made a, a little module that will plug into there there's a little hole in the side where you can feed the cable in again on any production model we make these a bit more waterproof um, but you can connect this in and inside there I'll open it up so we can take a look um, uh, there's a little relay module in this one and that can be used to control, for example, the tank heaters. Um, I'm also looking at connecting up, uh, which we'll cover um, in, in the next couple of weeks, uh, just in one of the videos around kind of LPG and gasset tanks, is to actually control the gasset tank as well. But it's one I'm just kind of working through. Do we control that from the master module or the under van module? But the options there for both, is essentially it's an auxiliary um, port that we've got in there. So we could use it for controlling anything, step lights, whatever it happens to be. So that's built into that as well. So a little bit of extendability there with the outdoor temperature monitor that gives us the outdoor temperature and humidity and the auxiliary port which allows us to control other things as well as we need to and again those things probably most useful if you're connected into the full system rather than the standalone module but as a standalone prototype um, I think this kind of covers off a working useful functionality with the remote control and the ability to open and close that freshened uh, waste water valves much easier than messing about with a tap. You could do it from your driver's seat when you're over the um, dump point, uh, for example, and easy enough to switch them off when you're finished with as well. So um, that's the um, valves. As I say, mount it. this uh, plastic, um, it's actually a, a hangover door um, holder of bits and pieces, is just really to demonstrate it so that everything wasn't just uh, hanging around uh, in my hands. 
And don't forget, this is a prototype as well at the moment. Uh, my next steps is to start building the other modules, get it connected up to the main control panel, because I think that that'll be an interesting one to show as a follow on and also connect to the other different modules together so that it all works together. And information from this module, such as the outdoor temperature, can be used to determine if you want the tank heaters on, for example. Um, or it could be used to determine if you want the heating on inside. Um, all, all sorts of different things. We can combine the information from the different sensors together and then make it a little bit intelligent in terms of how we're doing things as we move along. Uh, but first step anyway, um, I say I'm quite pleased where I got to, slightly frustrated it took three iterations of it and the next step is to kind of prove it out, make sure it works in practice, make any tweaks and then ultimately get it into a, a kind of printed circuit board rather than a, a kind of prototype one just for robustness. It also enable me to compact it down and just make sure everything's waterproof and just think that through. Um, so that, that, that's something over the coming months of work too, to get something that's really robust and suitable for sustained kind of un under van usage there. And uh, next step, as I say, is to connect it up to the control panel, get it, uh, make sure it mounts all right, right lengths of cables, all of those good things, and think about how it actually then fixes onto the uh, van. Um, Obviously, I'm doing this for my CV20 uh, when it arrives, but equally, it's uh, it, it would fit most um, kind of vans. It's just, it's just uh, or even self builds. If 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 you're building your own, it might be a good way or something to think about. So, if you're interested in um, in this and it's something you think would be useful, please bob a comment in in below, and because uh, it gives me a gauge of interest. Because if there's some people interested in it. I can get, um, it, it depends, you know, am I making it for myself, am I, am I making it for a dozen people, you know, or, or, or is it bigger numbers of people, because it helps me make the right decisions on what to do next if there is some interest in it. Um, at the moment I'm just doing this to kind of uplift my van to how I wanted it and just try and add a bit of uh, clever things that make my life easier uh, when on the, on the move, so hopefully you can uh, see that coming through there. but please uh, drop a comment in if you're interested. Please give us a like if you think it's something useful and please consider subscribing to the channel as it helps the channel grow and it helps motivate me to do more and more of this stuff because um, I'm really keen to keep pushing on with it and, and seeing where we get to. So that's camper controls, valve control module and under van control system. Um, this is a prototype and we'll keep moving it along, get it connected up so hopefully next time we'll see it connected up to the main panel. Thank you for watching. You take care.